Now he's starting to flip a little bit. He's ready. He's ready. We'll lead him up here. Head up. He's getting tireder and tireder. Here he comes. Nope, he got a little more. Okay, we'll pick that line back up. You can tell whenever you're fighting a salmon or a trout and they're starting to flip a little bit, flip over in the water, it's getting to be time. Whoa. But he's not quite ready yet. Low water temperature, plenty of oxygen. They can put up some amazing fights. Man, he's got so much stamina. Just a battle. Just a battle. I'm going to win this battle. And I am not babying him. I'm putting as much pressure on him as I think is prudent. Here he comes. Nope. Right there. There we go. Whoa, another horse. Look at that fish. Whew. Man, oh, man. Now, that's a rainbow trout. Look at that, guys. That's what trolling flies can do. That's just an incredible fish. 20 plus inches long, heavy, beautiful square tail. Um, man, it doesn't get any better than that. I love Eagle Lake and I love rainbow trout. Hey guys, Kel Kellogg here. Check out these beautiful trolling flies. Look at all those flies. There is no bait that I fish for trout that generates as many viewer questions as trolling flies. Now you guys that watch the channel regularly, watch the FHS fishing channel here on YouTube, you've seen me out trolling flies in my power boat. You've seen me out trolling flies in my kayak. You've seen me troll them at small lakes. You've seen me troll them um, up in the high Sierras. You haven't seen me troll them a whole lot in big reservoirs. Like for example, I'm out here at Folsom Lake today. And uh, that's one of the things I've been getting questions about in reference to trolling flies. How do you rig them for, for big water? How do you rig them for deep water? How do you fish them in reservoirs? How would you fish them in Shasta or Folsom or Don Pedro or wherever? And uh, that's what I want to talk about today. Let's talk a little bit about fly rigging. And uh, I don't want to disappoint you, but fly trolling is really pretty simple. Here's my number one rig. If you watch the channel a lot, if you've watched my, my fly trolling content, you have seen this. I have a leader. I have a leader. This is eight or 10 pound test fluorocarbon line. Why fluorocarbon? It reflects light at the same rate as water and it renders it virtually invisible to fish. Now, I've had some guys comment that you shouldn't run flies on fluorocarbon because the action of the fly can cause the line to break. I've never seen that. I re-rig fairly often, hasn't been an issue for me. If you're not confident, re-rig often that's my advice but by using you know the eight or ten pound test exceptionally strong you're in position to land a really big trout now down on the business end all i've done i've taken the fly i've tied the fly on this is one of our metal head trolling flies this is one of my best flies right here i've tied the fly on using a pelomar knot and i am running an action disc just like that right on the nose of the fly. Let me put up some footage uh, right here of this working in the water. What you get, you get rotation on the fly, you get a bunch of vibration. It is an absolute fish killer. I will fish this right under the surface rig this way. I will drop it down 100 feet if I need to rig this way. It flat out catches fish. That action disc puts out a lot of vibration, a lot of disturbance. The trout know it's there. They feel it with their lateral line, they move in, they see a very unique bait fish imitation, very often, fish on. Now, let's look at an alternative rigging. I have a lot of guys reach out and ask me, can you fish flies with a dodger? And the answer is absolutely yes, you can. I have the same fly, same pattern of fly rigged up. Once again, eight to 10 pound test on the fluorocarbon leader. I have one of my six inch fisheye dodgers right here and I have the same pattern of fly rigged right behind the Dodger. Here's the key if you want to run it behind the Dodger. 
get rid of the action disc. If you run it with an action disc, it's gonna put so much drag on the back of that Dodger, the Dodger's not gonna work very well. So lose the action disc, but what you wanna do, you want this fly sitting from two to three Dodger links behind the back of the blade. That's the key, six inch blade, 14 inch leader that is going to give that fly in the water you're going to see it here in a second it's going to give it that little hesitation and dart action that blade's going to be kicking it's going to be imparting that action to the fly the reservoir trout's out here somewhere you're going to drop i wouldn't fish this near the surface i'm going to drop this down on the downrigger or you know use a dipsy diver or you know a few colors of lead core the bottom line is i'm going to fish this well below the surface trout's swimming along he hears oh there's a trout feeding over there so he moves in closer what does he see well he sees flashes the the pulses from the dodger get more intense he gets excited he thinks his buddy's eating breakfast he swims over there he sees a bait fish and he pounces all over it so two ways to rig flies for reservoir fishing um rig them with the action disc or get rid of the action disc and rig them with a dodger if you're using the action disc you can troll them anywhere from 1.5 miles an hour all the way up to three miles an hour if you're running the dodger you're really your your speed is really dictated by how fast you control that blade which with a six inch blade like this is typically you know 1.8 to 2 miles an hour is where you're going to want to be i'm out of here for now if you like these kind of fishing tips uh hit that subscribe button that bell notification you'll always know when i'm on here talking fishing and if you are looking for gear blades trolling flies rods and more or if you want to book a guy to trip with me get on over to fhsfishing.com have a great day i'm kel kellogg